everyone. Welcome to TEDxCMU's first virtual innovation expo. And today I'm going to be interviewing Dan Hack, the CEO and founder of Conversation. So why don't we just jump right in? Um, can you give a brief introduction to what Conversation is and what you do uh, at the company? Yeah, sure. Um, and thank you for having me here today. Um, so about two years ago or three years ago now, I was sitting um, in a class at CMU called Internet's Effect on Society and Politics. And the resounding message from the class was that the internet has had a pretty negative effect on society and politics. So I was just sitting there in class, like doodling on my, you know, notepad. And I was like, you know what, we should try to think of a way to fix this because I myself have experienced a lot of really harmful conversations online um, that felt to be very, you know, unproductive and like a waste of time. So then, you know, I, I founded this company conversation with a group of really smart engineers from CMU. And basically our goal is to equip students with the skills necessary to engage in civil, well-reasoned conversations um, in the classroom and just generally in their lives online. And, you know, the, the way that we're doing that, and, and I'll get into a little demo later on the platform, um, is through a text-based platform that's designed to uh, help educators foster these small group discussions where the students can then really be engaged in the topic, whatever it is, and learn how to better uh, discuss what they're learning in the class. Cool. So this platform you just mentioned, a major aspect of its technology stems from artificial intelligence. Could you talk more about that part and potentially show us a demo? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think a, a really unique part of conversation is that we are connecting, you know, obviously education and technology. Um, and AI is kind of one of our main pillars in that, especially with this pandemic going on, teachers just have so much on their plate that we try to alleviate some of the stress and, and actually give them much more powerful metrics for their students by using AI. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen really briefly. All right, so you'll see here um, what the platform actually looks like. I'm on a teacher's account right now. So I'm just gonna jump into, you know, every week, uh, twice a week, we, we invite people in the community to come participate in conversations about relevant topics. So last week, for example, we discussed um, the MBA boycott, which was very, you know, relevant, obviously, to everything that's been going on. So just really briefly to show you how our platform works, as I mentioned, we put three to five participants around a table. And through the educator's instructions, there are these guiding prompts that you'll see at the top here. And where the AI really comes in is that we have these sentence uh, suggestions at the bottom. So these don't really have subjects in them. These are more just structures that through psychology research, we found to be some of the most open-minded responses. Uh, so right now, you know, these are static and that there's just three of them. But whenever someone sends a message, these actually get refreshed to be, uh, you know, relevant to what the last comment was because we really believe that how you say things is even sometimes more important than what you're actually saying. Furthermore, when the conversation is over, we provide the educators with uh, pretty intense feedback and analysis for their students. And our AI is able to actually track how relevant a student was and if they had any toxic messages. Fortunately, we don't see that many toxic messages as, as when people are on our platform, you know, they're really promoted to be open-minded. Um, and as I mentioned, especially with students at home, you know, this gives teachers and, and educators alike clear levels of accountability for their students. Whereas, you know, in a Zoom breakout room, for example, sometimes it can be hard to get a clear idea of who's participating. Um, so that's really just like a brief demo of the platform. But to answer your question, you know, AI is a very important piece of conversation. Yeah, that demo looked really good. Uh, so Thanks. you just talked about this in the demo. Um, but could you go more into about the beta testing and the classroom experience you guys are providing to the students and how they're using your product and what they're getting out of it? Yeah, of course. Um, so as you mentioned, we were beta testing uh, throughout the spring in about five different classes. There was two in Pittsburgh, two in New York, and one in Europe, at an international school. That was really exciting because, um, you know, one of the pieces of conversation is about combining students from different classes around the world to really open up their perspectives on different topics. 
So for example, we had an English class and a social studies class in Pittsburgh and in New York that were both talking about healthcare. And we connected them with a class in Prague in the Czech Republic at an international school where we had 30 participants come together that were from nine different countries to talk about their own country's healthcare. And it was really fascinating to see, you know, the Americans kind of had this privatized healthcare um, in mind, whereas the Europeans had more of this public healthcare in mind. And they had never really gotten a firsthand perspective on the other one. Um, so that's a very clear kind of use case of our platform. And then over the summer, we just continued to test it. But now uh, heading into the fall, we're actually being used in, as of right now, 10 different schools. Um, but our plan is to really expand that over the next coming months. Um, but we're excited to be in Colgate University at CMU. They've been using us as well as uh, NYU. So we're excited to kind of just keep expanding our use case. Um, and this way we can connect you know, students from all these different schools around the country. Wow. So you talked about Prague and Czech Republic and Europe. Could you talk about like the idea of the variety of backgrounds that you're getting from these students in the beta testing and why that is so important? And does conversation see itself as like a global platform? Yeah, that's a great question. And that really comes down to, you know, why we initially founded this company. And that is what we're seeing on social media right now is very clearly these social bubbles that are forming. Um, and it's very harmful to our society as a whole in that, you know, if you're on one side of a political spectrum, all the information that you're intaking is from that side for the most part. And what we attribute this to is kind of a blocking culture where if you start to get in an argument with someone and you're like, oh, this is useless, I'm blocking them that's fine, but now you're, you know, losing this other perspective that you used to have. Same thing with news sources, you know, media literacy is very important, of course, but it's also important to be intaking news from all different sides to understand where other people are coming from. Um, and conversation is trying to tackle that by, at a young age, promoting and really honoring, uh, speaking with those that you actually know you disagree with from the start, because we believe that the way that people become more radical in their beliefs is being isolated and passionate about them. That's kind of an equation that we've developed is that, you know, if you're only hearing one perspective and you have all this confirmation bias over and over again, that you're gonna keep believing it and even stronger. And we truly believe that some of the world's most complicated issues will be solved when we compromise, negotiate, and hear what both sides have to say. Um, so, you know, collaborative assignments as we call, call them is a cornerstone of our platform. And as you mentioned, you know, we're really excited to pop some of these social bubbles at a younger age for students. Yeah, those are all valid points. So conversation is mainly a virtual platform for classrooms. And since the COVID outbreak, a lot of a lot of things have gone virtual. Can you talk about how that has affected conversation as a team uh, while you guys are working and also your future plans for the platform? Yeah, great question. So I would say as a team, it hasn't affected us that much in that we have always really been a virtual team. Um, you know, the conversation team has developed through CMU engineers, but also just kind of friends and associates of mine throughout my life that I've reached out to about working on this project. So they're not all located in Pittsburgh. Um, so we actually have nine different states. You know, we're technically an employer in nine different states because we have people all over the country working on this which is very true to our mission um, as it stands. But I will say that while our mission has not changed and that we are, trying, we are attempting to improve online discourse and connect students, we have injected um, a clear sense of engagement that we wanna to provide to teachers as well as ease of use. And this came about because this shift to online learning, you know, a lot of the educators on our team uh, give us very firsthand perspectives on what they're going through and it's a mess. And, you know, education in general right now, they're being asked to do a million things. They're trying to keep themselves sane, students <laughs> sane, while also going back to school, semi in person, semi not, whatever it is, there's just so much going on for them. And we understand that. And um, because of that, we have really emphasized how easy our platform is to use. We've worked with, you know, close to 100 teachers now, just trying to figure out what's the best things that we can do for them to make their lives easier. So those report pages, for example, are all automated um, to ideally make it so the teachers don't have to do as much work when they're talking about 
uh, giving each student individualized growth because now they have a very objective report that has exactly what those students need to work on. Um, and then, you know, we have all these video calls going on. We're like on one right now, obviously. And those are, they're great for a lot of different purposes. But as I'm sure you're seeing, as I'm definitely seeing, these group discussions and video calls are not as engaging. Lots of students turn off their cameras, mics, et cetera. Whereas with conversation, there's a high level of engagement and accountability that we provide educators for small group discussions. Yeah, the online learning space right now is pretty hectic as a lot of <laughs> classes have just started. Um, so can you talk more about how you guys are different from your competitors? Because I can imagine a lot of new companies have popped up the past couple of months. So how is conversation staying ahead of the curve? Yeah, so I would say that first off, we really take teachers' considerations to heart and into our plan. Um, you know, like I said, all, a lot of these platforms are cool and they're doing a lot of great things, but they're just another tool for teachers to learn. Um, and we're trying to make ours as easy to use as possible. So that's why there's so much AI built in, which, which I would say set us apart. Um, artificial intelligence has not been brought into the education space as much yet. I will say also, you know, this kind of two prong approach where we're really trying to improve civil discourse makes it so not only are we like surviving through a pandemic, but we're actually thriving in that we're gonna engage students and give them long-term takeaways of being able to better discuss with those that they disagree with. Um, so yeah, I'd say that's kind of our biggest differentials is that our goal is not just to throw another tool at teachers, it's that we're actually trying to turn this shift to online learning into a positive opportunity. You know, we always saw this coming. Obviously, none of us foresaw a pandemic, but the shift to online learning has always been inevitable in that it really provides more equity in education space as there can be individualized growth for every student. Um, you know, some of the AI projects that we're working on right now will make it so students get a very clear picture on what they need to improve upon without having to rely on, you know, a school system that might have thousands and thousands of kids that is really hard for them to not let people slip through the cracks. Yeah, so talking about online learning, we're both still attending Carnegie Mellon. Um, and you talked about this briefly about how you started conversation. Um, could you go more into that, like what it's like juggling a startup and your college life and how you brought everyone invo uh, involved today? Yeah. Um... I wouldn't say it's like the easiest thing, but it makes it a lot easier when you're very passionate about what you're working on. Um, and that goes for everyone that I've brought onto the team. Obviously, they're not getting paid, you know, crazy amount of money or anything like that, but they're all really passionate about the vision and the mission of our, of our company. Um, so, you know, at first it was more of a hobby in that this was just like a project I was always dreaming about on the side. And it's really been a dream come true to be able to put significantly more time into it with a lot of the people that I've gotten close with. Um, so I would say that while it's difficult to juggle in a mechanical sense of like fitting time in the day, it's something that I really enjoy doing. Um, so I encourage like anyone who's passionate about something to like not worry about your schedule and just try to jam it all in. That's great advice. So wrapping around a little bit, um, you talked about that vision that you and your friends uh, started for conversation and the core mission statement from what I gathered is open minded, open mindedness and inclusivity. Could you talk more about why that's so important, especially in our social media and digital platforms? Yeah, no, um, you know, that's so important to us because we're all seeing it firsthand. You know, this is not like a unique problem to us or to any group. It's just a universal thing where we are becoming more toxic as a country just based on all the research about dialogue online it's just deteriorating and you know we were given this really powerful tool that is the internet and social media and you know part of our our rights is for it to be completely uncensored which is fine but what it's done as i mentioned earlier is it's really torn people apart and we are not seeing you know unity right now in any sense and I think it's really important for us to have these tough discussions because we actually promote disagreement and we promote controversy. We just promote it in a productive manner that people will walk away like, oh, I learned something new today and maybe I have some thinking to do. You know, it doesn't matter where your ideas are shifting, but that's really what we want to get out of it. Um, so our vision is, in the, especially in the politics world, but really in any world, you know, science, sports, history, whatever it is, 
we want people and students to be using our platform to have really hard conversations, uh, but doing it in a productive way. So that's kind of our vision and, and what we're working to get to. Wow. Okay. So as we're wrapping up here, um, can you talk about some of the exciting things that are happening at Conversation today and what your near uh, term goals are? Yeah, of course. Um, so I would say our kind of most exciting news from the past few weeks, we've just been getting used by a lot more schools, which is obviously our goal. Uh, we had a pretty large investment over the summer that made it a lot easier for us all to work on this and just gave us more connections in the education space that we need. Um, so, you know, our, our goal is eventually to partner with some of these large education companies. Um, so our short term goal is just to keep developing how many students are using our platform and get real usage on it. So as I mentioned earlier, like now we're being used in uh, five different high schools and five different colleges. And that's before we've really started to do any major reach out um, in marketing. So those are kind of been some of our major wins. We've expanded the team to about 15 people now um, who are all working, you know, real hours each week. So those are just kind of the exciting pieces we've done. We, we did a event at CMU last week for the Mellon College of Science orientation. There was about 200 kids who participated in a conversation on academic honesty. Uh, so yeah, all those have just been small wins, but we're, we're looking forward to some larger distribution in the future to really start connecting students from all over. Yeah, that's amazing. You guys are moving really fast now. Um, so could you, to wrap, uh, to close out, could you talk about how people can reach out to you and if they're interested in your products or the company or they just want to follow along on updates? Yeah, of course. Uh, Conversation.org is the easiest way to learn more about us. Um, we do a weekly demo, uh, actually twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7. I wouldn't even call it a demo, really. We just have conversations about relevant topics that I was showing you earlier. Uh, we have one tonight at 7, but, you know, every Tuesday and Thursday at 7, we do a demo that I think we've, I mean, I know we've had a lot of people have been joining it and really enjoying and like learning about the platform. So I'd say that we also have a newsletter that you can sign up for on our website. Um, we actually have an ambassador program as well, specifically for college students. That's a thriving program for them to learn more about conversation, champion our mission and bring it to their schools. Um, so I would say all those are great ways to get involved. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for having me today. I found this conversation very interesting. Your technology was cool and the demo was very fun. Uh, so yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you for, for hosting this. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to uh, speaking with you soon.